Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, Pro Physique Athlete. Today I'm going to be sharing a full six-day Ronnie Coleman-inspired hypertrophy program that uses a modified push-pull leg split. Ronnie Coleman is an eight-time Mr. Olympia and regarded by many as the best bodybuilder ever. He was known for his crushing training programs which combined high volumes with high weights. Today I'm excited to be sharing a program with you that I've created based on his style. The program is based on this variation of the push-pull leg split that Ronnie used at one point. The split is set up as back, biceps, shoulders, legs, chest, triceps, and calves. And you'll see that this is ultimately a push-pull legs variant where we basically alter the order of things and we've swapped shoulders off of chest day onto back and biceps day and then moved calves off of legs onto your push day. And I have kept this split in this program to illustrate a few unique points. We'll start off with a program walkthrough where I'll share everything you'll need to know to run the program yourself, including exercises, sets, and reps. Then we'll talk about the weekly setup or my preferred layout of workouts across the week. And finally, we'll talk about the pros and cons of this modified push-pull legs program inspired by Ronnie Coleman. Okay, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swole's Ronnie Coleman inspired push pull legs program. It's a six day high volume program that's designed for intermediate to advanced athletes. We have back biceps and shoulder day one, leg day one, chest triceps and calf day one, back biceps and shoulders two, legs two, and chest triceps and calves two. Here are the exercises and here are the sets and reps. Down here I have the total number of sets for each workout so you have an idea of workout length. And down here we have the total number of weekly sets. And this is one of the highest volume programs I've put out so far. Starting off we have deadlifts. Ronnie used to count deadlifts for the back and I actually kind of like this because it takes it off of leg day and distributes your fatigue a little bit. We're doing three sets here and we're using a top set back off method so you're going to warm up to one heavy set of four to eight reps and then do two back off sets with four to eight reps as well with about 10% off the bar. I think the top set back off method is a great way for bodybuilders to introduce a little bit of strength work. Then we have T-bar rows for the back, three sets of eight to 12. This is a pretty fatiguing one-two punch having deadlifts and then a barbell tight row right after. You do have a lot of axial fatigue here, but this is part of Ronnie's training style. Then we have neutral grip pull downs for the back, three sets of eight to 12 and chest supported rows also for the back, three sets of 10 to 15. I've actually substituted a couple exercises here to make things a little bit less fatiguing. Before Ronnie would have had his barbell rows and more dumbbell rows on the same day, but I've decided to put a bit of machine work here so you can still continue to stimulate your back without generating as much fatigue and hopefully keeping the quality of your sets up. Then we have dumbbell overhead press, which targets the front delts and also a little bit of upper chest, three sets of eight to 12. Then dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of eight to 12. Following that, easy bar curls for the biceps, three sets of eight to 12. And finally, Bayesian curls for the biceps, three sets of 10 to 15. And these are basically a one arm cable curl where your arm is actually behind your body. Note here that I swapped the order here a bit. Ronnie would have put his shoulder stuff at the end, but I'd rather it come a little earlier in the workout so you can give your overhead press some priority. And it also gives your biceps a little bit time to rest after back training. The biceps do get fatigued by your rowing movements and they might perform a little better if you give them a little bit of a break. Then we have leg day number one. We start off with leg extensions for the quads, four sets of 10 to 15, followed by front squats for the quads, three sets of six to 10. Notice here that Ronnie's using a pre-fatigue method here. He's basically trying to target his quads with a leg extension and then follow it up with front squats where the idea is that his quads will already be fatigued. So they're more likely to be the limiting factor in the movement. This is somewhat of an advanced technique I don't think beginners should really be using pre-fatigue. They're better off having their main heavy movement come first. So if you are a beginner, I'd rather you start with your most big heavy compound movements and follow up with more isolation type work. Then we have hack squats for the quads, three sets of eight to 12, lying leg curls for the hamstrings, four sets of 10 to 15, and finally machine lower raises for the side delts, four sets of 12 to 20. Notice that I've split up a little bit of side delt work, taking it off of this back biceps and shoulder day and moving it onto leg day. This serves to even out the days a bit since this day is really long and it also gives you a little bit of higher frequency for your side delts so you can fit in some more productive volume. Moving on, we have chest, triceps, and calf day number one. We start with bench press for the chest and we're also using a top set back off method here. One top heavy set of five to 10 reps followed by two back off sets of five to 10 reps with lighter weight. Then we have incline machine press for the chest, three sets of eight to 12 followed by cable flies also for the chest, three sets of 12 to 20. Next for triceps, we have easy bar skull crushers, three sets of eight to 12 and cable press downs, three sets of 10 to 15. Then we have close grip bench press for the triceps, but this also hits the chest, three sets of eight to 12. Ronnie also uses pre-fatigue for his triceps. So he has his direct tricep work coming before his close grip bench press. This effectively shifts the movement to make it a bit more triceps focused and will also mean it generates a bit less fatigue since you won't be using as heavy weight. Then we have seated calf raises for the calves, three sets of eight to 12 
and machine calf raises also for the calves. And here we're using a my rep scheme. So you'll warm up to one top heavy set of 12 to 20 reps, take 10 seconds of rest, and then do five mini sets of three to five reps. And you'll only be taking about 10 seconds in between each of these. This is an easy way to fit in a lot of productive volume in a short amount of time. Moving on, we have back, biceps, and shoulder day number two. We start off with barbell rows for the back, three sets of eight to 12, followed up with single arm dumbbell rows, also for the back, three sets of eight to 12. Ronnie really liked his bread and butter eight to 12 rep range. I have mixed up the rep ranges here for some of our later movements. Then we have cable rows for the back, three sets of 10 to 15. I've actually taken out a little bit of the barbell rowing here. So you're not actually barbell rowing twice per week because I think it's a bit excessive with all that axial loading. For less advanced people, fatigue may not be as big of an issue, but as you go on an experience level, it will be. Then we go to machine pull downs for the back three sets of 12 to 20. In Ronnie's training setups, he'll put all of his vertical pulling on this second back day in what he would call a back width focus day. I'd prefer to actually split up your vertical and horizontal pulling. So you'll notice that I have some of the pull downs coming on the first back day as well. I think this is just better off for fatigue distribution. You're less likely to burn out on a certain movement pattern within a workout. Then we have barbell overhead press, three sets of eight to 12. Barbell overhead press is slightly more fatiguing than dumbbell overhead press. So you'll notice that I've put it on this back day, which is actually easier than this one because this first one has deadlifts on it. Then we have dumbbell lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of 10 to 15. Preacher curls for the biceps, three sets of eight to 12. And finally, machine curls for the biceps, three sets of 12 to 20. Next, we have leg day number two, and we start off with squats for the quads, five sets. And we're using a top set back off method here, one top set of five to 10 reps, followed by four back off sets. I do use a top set back off method in this program to introduce a little bit of strength work, but I use it quite sparingly because this is going to be relatively fatiguing. And this program is already fatiguing enough as it is. Then we have leg presses for the quads, four sets of eight to 12, followed by lunges, which I count for quads and glutes and hamstrings, two sets of eight to 12. Then we have RDLs for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of eight to 12. Finally, seated leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of eight to 12. Then we have chest, triceps, and calf day number two. We start with incline bench press for the chest, three sets of eight to 12. Then we have decline bench press, three sets of eight to 12. I typically don't include decline pressing in my programs because your lower chest gets stimulated pretty well by flat benching. But here, since we have so much volume and a lot of exercises anyways to play with, we can afford to put in some decline work. Then we have incline dumbbell flies for the chest, three sets of 10 to 15. Moving on, we have easy bar French press for the triceps, three sets of eight to 12. These are kind of like skull crushers, except you're sitting upright. Then we have machine dips for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15. Next we have leg press calf raises and we're using a my rep scheme again. One top set of eight to 12 reps followed by seven mini sets of three to five reps. And I'm estimating this to be equivalent to about five straight sets here. Then we have cable lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of 10 to 15. And notice that I've modified the split again here by moving cable lateral raises off of back, bicep and shoulder day number two and moving it onto this chest, tricep and calf day. This day was just getting way too long and this second leg day is actually really tough already and I didn't really want to add more volume here. You'll notice that our upper body focus days are significantly longer than our leg days. This is fine though because leg days are going to be a lot more fatiguing in terms of the exercises that you're actually using. Okay, now that you've seen the program, let's go over our weekly setup. So this is how we've set up the split across the week. Back, biceps and shoulders one, leg day number one, chest, triceps and calves one, then back, biceps, and shoulders number two, leg day number two, and chest, triceps, calves two, and then rest. This split was set up as six days per week. Ronnie Coleman believed in trying to hit muscle groups twice per week, which was actually considered high frequency at the time. And it makes sense that he did that because he had to fit in so much volume. Now, this is a modified push-pull leg split where you basically shuffled around the days to have your pull-oriented day first, then leg-oriented day, and then your pushing-oriented day. Ronnie basically moved his shoulder training off of the push day, which gave him the benefit of being able to train his overhead press relatively fresh. Typically, accessory pressing movements come secondary to horizontal pressing movements and don't get as much attention. To fill the gap on this push day, he took calves off of leg day and moved it on to push day. I do kind of like how this works because leg days are typically your most fatiguing day. So taking calves off of leg day does help a little bit from a fatigue distribution standpoint. I'll also note that I like how he has back coming before legs. Tough leg day is more likely to impact your back training than the other way around. But notice that Ronnie counts deadlifts for back. So you actually have deadlifts coming before your first leg day. I I would typically consider this suboptimal, but he has tried to get around it by choosing very quad focused movements for this first leg day. For instance, front squats and hack squats. And he puts his main squat and RDL, which is his other hip hinge movement, onto his second leg day. Okay, now let's talk about the pros and cons of this six day hypertrophy program inspired by Ronnie Coleman. 
First of all, this program features high volume with heavy compound movements. Ronnie was infamous for programming crushing workouts featuring deadlifts and heavy rows. There are some pros and cons to this, but the advantage here is that you're generating a lot of raw stimulus with these big heavy compounds. If you are, say, an intermediate athlete who really needs just a lot of stimulus, and if you're able to recover from this, then this could be an effective way to train to accumulate more volume for your lower back. So if you really want to thicken up your erectors, this program is going to help you. Also, if you suspect that you're just not getting enough stimulus from your program, especially if you've just been using a lot of isolation work, then you might want to try something more like this. Next, this program gives emphasis to the back. Ronnie Coleman was famous for his back development, and you can see how this is reflected in his programming. His pull day comes first in the split after his rest day, which gives it some priority. He also featured a lot of heavy compound work, which included heavy free weight rowing. Some people argue that you don't need to focus that much on your erector spinae for back development, but remember that the erector spinae actually run up and down your entire back, so they will contribute to back width. For that reason, I do typically recommend that people include at least one movement in their program that involves their erectors to a high degree. This could include barbell rows, deadlifts, or RDLs for example. Okay, now let's talk about the disadvantages of this six day Ronnie inspired push pull legs program. First of all, this program features leg days after your deadlift and rowing days. You'll see that I typically try to spread out my axial fatigue in a program. The problem with having a deadlift day and then a leg day coming right after is that your lower back is gonna be really fatigued from your deadlifts and this could impact the quality of your leg training. I think that leg days should be given a high priority in any program and you should be careful about having highly fatiguing days coming back to back. Note that we did try to get around this with our exercise selection. By choosing very quad focused movements for our first leg day, we minimize the interference with deadlifts the day before. Next, this program is highly fatiguing and probably the most fatiguing program that I've put out so far. This is because we're using a lot of heavy compound work, especially exercises that have a lot of axial fatigue like heavy rows, deadlifts, and RDLs. Now for someone less experienced, say late beginner to intermediate, this won't be that big of an issue because you're just not able to move that much weight. In fact, if you're in that scenario and you're able to recover from it, this can actually be a good thing as we talked about the pros because of the high magnitude of total raw stimulus it provides. But for more advanced athlete, fatigue will become a limiting issue. If you're able to move heavy weights, you're gonna be generating so much fatigue that it will affect the productivity of your workouts. Now, Ronnie was able to lift heavy weights and this didn't seem to bother him, but I would consider him an outlier in this aspect. You'll notice that I've tempered this program a little bit by taking out some of the heavy axial loading, replacing in a little bit more machine work, and also including some lighter, higher rep work. Next, this program features long pull days. Your back biceps and shoulder day is a really long day and they're gonna be really tough, especially with deadlifts on that first one. You'll notice that I've tried to move around some of our side delt work to even out the days a little bit. Finally, with this program, our Arms are trained after pushing and pulling, that is biceps comes after back and triceps comes after chest. This is one of the biggest disadvantages of the traditional push-pull legs type setup. After doing a lot of heavy back work, for example, your biceps are going to be indirectly fatigued and they won't perform as well on your direct bicep training. Now, I will be sharing this full program as an Excel file in my Facebook group. So if you haven't joined the group already, find the link in the description below, join the group and you can download the program for free. If you wanna learn how to run your program over time and make longer time scale changes, check out my newest book, Advanced Hypertrophy Periodization, which is the first book dedicated to hypertrophy periodization. I go through the ins and outs of how to change variables in your program across the training year. If you want to see another push-pull legs type setup, check out this video where I share a full six-day hypertrophy program with a modified push-pull leg split. Push-pull legs is really popular, but I do think it's overrated in some aspects with some of the disadvantages that we saw come into play here. You'll see in this modified split how I've tried to address them.